Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're shifting from sequences to series and the first thing we're going to do is become familiar with the general way of expressing a series. Remember a series is the sum of the terms of a sequence so we need to sum up the terms. Let's say we had a sequence of five numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Well, how do we turn that into a series where we're going to sum them up and how do we write that in a compact form? Well, we could write it as one plus two plus three plus four plus five. But what if we have an infinite series? We can't sit there and forever just add up all the terms. We need to write in a compact form. And to do that, we have the symbol right here, which is the Greek letter sigma. And here we write when i goes from one to five and i goes up in integer format so i will become one then two then three then four then five this is the upper limit of the number i starting from the lower limit and here we have the sum of i's when they go from one to five so when i is one we get a one when i is two we get a two when i is three we get a three when i is four we get a four and when i becomes five we get a five why don't we go beyond five because the upper limit for i is five why do we start at one because the lower limit starts at one it goes up like an integer and then we simply write the sum this simply means the sum of all the i's going from one to five that means one plus two plus three plus four plus five so this can be written in a compact form like this what if we write it like this the sum from i going from 1 to 4, so the upper limit here is 4, of 2i. So each time we plug in the value for i, i will become 1, then it will become 2, then it will become 3, then it will become 4. We stop at 4 because that's the upper limit, and each time we multiply times 2. So 2 times 1, plus 2 times 2, plus 2 times 3, plus 2 times 4, or 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, and that is the series that can be compactly written like this. So it's two times the number i when i goes from one to four, and this means we're going to sum them all up. That's why we add up all those terms. What if we get something like this? Now let's do this one together. So we have the sum from i goes from one to four of two i minus one. So we're going to let i go from one to two to three to four. It doesn't go beyond four, and we just plug in for i each single time and add them all up. So this becomes, 2 times i, which is starting at 1, minus 1, plus, and I'll put brackets around it, so that's the first term, plus, now let i equals 2, so we have 2 times 2 minus 1, so 2 times 2 minus 1, plus, now we have 2 times the next value for i, which is 3, so 2 times 3 minus 1, and then finally, we have the next and the last value for i, 2 times 4 minus 1. So 2 times 4 minus 1. So here are the four terms. Why do we know there's four terms? Because i goes from 1 to 4. So we have i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, i equals 4. This means we sum them all up, and this is what we're summing. 2 times i as i goes from 1 to 4 minus 1. So 2 times 1 minus 1, 2 times 2 minus 1, 2 times 3 minus 1, 2 times 4 minus 1. And that is what we mean by that sigma notation. Well, let's finish it up. So this is equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1, plus 4 minus 1, which is 3, plus 6 minus 1, which is 5, plus 8 minus 1, which is 7. So that would then be the series. And the result of the series, i going from 1 to 4, we sum them up, with 2i minus 1. And then here we have one more. What if we have the upper limit as n instead of a number? How do we deal with that? Well, remember that n was just any number, any value for i, any integer. It could be anything, so what we're going to do here is we're going to plug that in, and at the very last term, we replace i with an n instead of a number. So, this is how it goes. So this would be 2 times 1 minus 1 plus and looks exactly the same as that, 2 times 2 minus 1, plus 2 times 3 minus 1, plus 2 times 4 minus 1, plus dot 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 dot, plus. With other, with other words, we just keep doing that until we reach the last value for i, which can be any number, it'll be n, so this will be 2 times n minus 1. And n, of course, could be any number. It could be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Could be 2. Could be 1. If n is equal to 1, then we stop right here. 
If n is equal to 2, then we stop here. If n is equal to 3, we stop with those three terms and so forth. So you can see that clearly this is the last term when i is replaced by the value for n, where n can be any value. And that's a more general way of writing that summation symbol if we don't know what the upper limit is or if we want the upper limit to be any number represented by n. And that is how it's done. Do I need to add the sums? I suppose I could. All right, so that's 10 plus 5, which is 15. This is equal to 10 plus 10, which is 20. This is 10 plus 6, which is 16. And of course, there we can't add it because we don't know what the value of n is. But, so yeah, it does make a difference. And yes, typically, you're right, the sum is always going to end up with a particular number so whenever you deal with a series you end up with a single result typically when you can add up all the terms and that is how it's done it's a sum it's a sum